Alright, so the war started on February 24th, 2022, and since then Russia has been constantly changing its goals. It started simply as protecting the borders of Russia from NATO expansion to the east, and eventually it became the denazification of the entire country of Ukraine and liberating Ukrainians who are being killed by Ukrainians. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude, and in today's short video I want to quickly conclude whether Russia is successful in achieving its goals. First of all, it all started with this statement by Putin that Russia simply wants to protect its national interests and not let NATO expand closer to its borders. And the reason for this, it is because Ukraine just showed the intention that they want to join NATO. And this is when Russia mobilized its forces next to Ukrainian borders, but eventually they even started leaving. Until suddenly they literally turned around and launched a full-scale invasion from the north, east and south of the country. In the beginning, let's say so, Russia was relatively successful, but as we already know at this very moment, the only viable region that's left for Russia is the east of Ukraine. So, the question is, was Russia able to stop NATO from expanding? Well, to be honest, Ukraine officially withdrew its intention to join NATO, but as of recently, we have two new, brand new countries that are planning to join NATO, and these countries are Sweden and Finland. They started their application to join the alliance on May 18th, 2022, so it is pretty relatively safe to say that no, Russia failed at stopping NATO from expansion. And because of this, Russia decided to switch its goal to something smaller, which is just the denazification of the entire country of Ukraine. And really quick before we continue, if you like hearing these reflections in addition to my daily news summaries, just feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, as a community, we are donating money to Ukraine each month, and if you want to be a part of this group donation, feel free to check the link in the description. Thanks so much, and let's continue. Alright, back to the goal of denazifying the entire country of Ukraine. According to ridiculous Russian propaganda, they have undeniable proof about this uprising movement of nationalism among Ukrainian citizens and especially soldiers. Russia got worried that these ideas might spread into Europe, that's why the next goal was to basically save the entire continent, by obviously removing these Nazis and drug addicts from the power, and what a noble thing to do, eh? But apparently, every single time whenever Russians were coming to denazify different cities, the residents of these cities were not particularly happy. It even felt like for some Russian politicians that these ideas of Nazism already spread and invaded the minds of poor Ukrainians which only further justified the invasion. And long story short, from all the cities that were proclaimed to be the epicenters of Nazism, only Mariupol was able to be denazified. Which, if you've seen the pictures, left the city completely in ruins. All utilities and communication systems were disrupted, and there was even a chance for cholera pandemic because, unfortunately, of all the dead bodies on the streets. At least for me personally, this definitely does not look like the city that was just liberated from Nazis. And so, back to the original question, was Russia able to achieve this next goal? Well, taking into consideration that the union among Ukrainians is an extremely high levels, and the main Führer of Third Reich, Zelensky with Jewish roots, is still in power, I would say that Russia failed here as well. Which made Russia narrow down its goals even further and just to focus on liberating small specific regions and save Ukrainians who are being killed by Ukrainians. And the regions of interest are the south and east of the country. In the south, Russia tries to keep Crimea and at the same time liberate the regions of Kherson, Melitopol and Mariupol. And in the east, these are the regions of Lugansk and Donetsk. And if you've been watching my videos for the last couple of weeks, you already know that Ukraine is by far much more successful in the south. Which makes the Russian infiltrators in these regions to try and do these referendums as soon as possible. The basic goals of these referendums is to separate separate these regions from Ukraine, proclaim independence and eventually even join Russia. But once again, Ukrainians are definitely succeeding in the south, which basically means that most likely these regions will be taken back. And the President Zelensky himself talks about getting Crimea back as well. Which leaves Russia with one and only final small goal, which is to liberate at least the east. And to narrow down it even further, they are only focusing at this very moment on Luhansk region, which is as you can see the pretty significant 
significant decrease from the previous goals of preventing the spread of NATO and liberating the entire continent of Europe from Nazis. At this very moment, Russia is sending the majority of its troops and weapons to this region, so it looks like that they might be relatively successful. But at the same time, they understand that the time is on Ukraine's side, because as soon as Ukraine gets these offensive weapons from the West, this is when the situation will drastically change. But you never know, because Russia might narrow down even further and just focus on liberating one small city, for example the city of Severodonetsk. And in case they are successful at least in this goal, this will allow Putin to proclaim that Russia was able to achieve its goals, claim a victory and hopefully go home. So let me know what you think about it, thank you so much for your attention and see you tomorrow.